Well, buongiorno. My name is Didi Royale, and I'm known as the Italian Diva. Today, we're going to cook authentic Italian food. Now, I've been all over Italy, and I'll tell you, the best place is in the Campania region. In fact, speaking of regions, I'm from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, where there aren't a whole lot of Italians left, but I'm holding the ground. So today, we're going to make three different uh, courses. We're going to do a fava bean crostini, and we're going to do a chicken saltimbocca, and for dessert, a torta caprese. And I'll explain everything as we go along. So now, let's get started. We're going to make our first appetizer, which again is called fava bean crostini. It's kind of done like a pesto. Now, pesto in Italian comes from the word pestare, which means to pound, which maybe you want to do to your ex-husband. I don't know. But anyway, we're going to do that to arugula. Now, when I cook, I always try to cook natural, no preservatives. So arugula is loaded with vitamins. It's kind of peppery, but we're going to tone that down with some fava beans. Many of you may not be uh, familiar with fava beans, but they also have lots of antioxidants, and I'm told it's great for your brain function. And as you get older, we need all the brains we can get, right? You know, my father wanted me to marry an Italian, but everybody I brought home, he hated, until I brought home somebody that not only looked like my father, talked it like my father, but also acted like my father. But then my mother hated him. But, you know, it's just the way it's Sicilians are and my father was from Sicily. So, let's get started on our fava bean crostini. So what we want to do, this is a food processor, which is very important, you know, in your kitchen. So I'm going to add one cup of fava beans. And I'm going to add some Parmigian Reggiano. Now when you buy cheese, always, always buy it off the block and make sure it has a stamp. Because in Italy, Parma Parmigiano is very controlled. In fact, the milk is so pure that it comes from the cow to the cheesemaker within 14 hours. In fact, Italian pediatricians recommend it for babies' first food. So remember, not in a package, not shredded, but off the block. And what I've done is I've shredded it, and we're going to add that to the uh, fava beans, which is only about three tablespoons. Add a pinch of salt, always use kosher salt, especially during the holidays, and we add a pinch of black pepper. And we're going to grate the, uh, the uh, garlic. Now I found a new way of grating garlic. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit advanced, but I'm going to show you how I do it. What I'm going to take here is the whole garlic with the paper on it, and I'm just going to grate it, like so. Now, it just takes a lot of time to peel and, and chip and mince and all that. We're not going to do that. You see, there's the garlic underneath. Tap it in. Easy peasy, right? A little bit more. Now, you notice I didn't peel it, and I'm not chopping it. Now, when you chop and mince garlic, if you put it in an olive oil, it's going to burn, and then it's very bitter. And what do you have to do? You have to throw it out. Okay? So... And we're gonna go over here and we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Now ladies and guys, olive oil, 70% of it is fake. That's right, fake. When you buy olive oil, don't look at the brand, look at the ingredients. Cold extracted, extra virgin, and this is from one country, and it has to have a dark green bottle. And don't buy more than you can use within six months because it will go rancid. All right, so we're gonna add some of the olive oil and I'm just gonna take a quarter cup and we pour that in. All right, we add that to the mix. Uh, one straight one here. Okay, turn it on. And you only wanna pulse it a little bit. And then we're going to add some of our arugula. And only about a cup. Here it goes. You know, when I had my own business called La Petite Gourmet in Connecticut, this was just coming out, Cuisinart. It became my third uh, employee. 
does a lot of work that I don't need to do. All right. Now this is what it looks like when it comes out of the food processor. But I'm gonna add a little bit more arugula, because again, we're making a pesto. So I'm gonna add some of this to the board. And with my dough scraper, gotta have one of these girls, put this on your Christmas list. All right, we're gonna just chop this just so it's kind of um, coarse. And I'm gonna use my chef's knife. Now always be careful, you're gonna keep your hands tucked in. You don't wanna cover any amputations, right? And get this nice and fine. Invest in some good knives too. Now what's more important, a good knife, a sharp knife, a good knife. And what's more dangerous, a sharp knife or a dull knife? Hmm. Actually, both. You always want to keep your knives sharpened. Okay, so now we're going to take this and we're going to add it to our mixture. Watch how handy this is, see? Pick it up, put it in there. And we're going to add a little bit more olive oil to make a nice mixture. All right, how much? Doesn't matter. Just eyeball it. And let's just mix this up. And it should be a little bit creamy because we're gonna put this on top of baguettes. Baguette is the French word, the Italian word is stellino. Stellino, which is like a baguette. A little bit more olive oil. Makes a great company appetizer with drinks, glass of wine, yum yum. Okay, so now we put this aside and we're gonna slice the baguettes. So take off your end and you're gonna do them about maybe an inch, an inch thick. Remember, keep your fingers tucked. You don't ever cook with your hands flattened out like that. Always tuck them in. Put that aside. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna toast these. So we can put them on an oven, in the oven, and we're gonna put them on a, a black iron, cast iron pan. We're gonna put them in here, like so. And you could crowd them. And you're gonna drizzle, drizzle the olive oil on top. Just drizzle. All right, we already have the oven preheated at 360 degrees. And we're gonna bake these. Just till we get a little toasty. And then we're gonna spread them with the fava bean crostini. All right, here we go. In the oven. For about 10 minutes and then we'll be right back with the finished deal. Okay, ciao, ciao. I think it's ready. Ha ha. All right, this is the crostini done with just some uh, sliced spaghetti and we toasted it a little bit with the olive oil. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some more garlic. Mm. You know, garlic, they keep the vampires away. Is that what they used to tell us? I don't know. I don't have any vampires in my house. But anyway, here we go. We're just going to tap that on. I'm going to add a little bit more garlic to each one. Okay. So now we're going to take the um, arugula and fava bean pesto, and we're going to add it on top of each one of these. Oh, wait a minute, I did forget one more thing. The lemon zest. Now, when you're gonna zest a lemon, you must buy the organic because otherwise it has wax on the outside. And you don't want wax in your food. You want fresh lemon. So we're gonna just grate this a little bit. You're only gonna do maybe two or three because you don't want to get that pectin, which is the white. So two or three rubs on the zester. Remember, you don't want the white. The white is called the pith. Scrape that in there. Then we're gonna cut it open, and we're gonna add this, the uh, juice. Now, just mix that in, that looks gorgeous. Great for Christmas too, right? Beautiful color. Okay, now we're gonna spread it on top of each of our crostini. Just kind of mound it. 
just make a little bit of a mount. Doesn't that look pretty? Use a spoon. Great with drinks, people. Wine, martini. Now, if you have any leftover pesto, it freezes beautifully, but you can keep it in your refrigerator up to a week. So you can make all this ahead of time. Save yourself time so you can spend more time with your guests. And there you have it. Fava bean crostini, Italian style. Should we try it? Yes, absolutely. Mm. Now that's Italian. Ciao, ciao. Well, we're back. This is Didi Royale from the Italian Diva showing you how to now to make the second part of our dinner. It's called chicken saltimbocca. Now, saltimbocca in Italian literally means to jump in your mouth. It's just so good it wants to jump in. And you will love it, I guarantee it. But you need the best ingredients. Now, I always use organic chicken. Chickens are omnivores and they eat everything. And you want chickens to be able to eat everything because then you eat what their meat is. So we're going to make chicken saltimbocca using breast of chicken. Now these have been pounded out a little bit because you want to break down the fiber. So how you want to do it is put it between two pieces of parchment and you're going to take a hammer or a meat pounder, the flat side, and you're just going to tap it. You don't want to shred it, tap it. And you want to feel it to see if those muscles have been broken down. And if they're not, you're going to tap it a little bit more. So what I've done to save time is I've tapped out a few of these. Now this is another one that we're going to add it to our uh, parchment and we're going to tap it out again, just a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to take a bowl of flour. Now, you always want to use unbleached flour because bleached flour has bleach in it. I don't think you'd want to have a, maybe a shot of Clorox in your food, right? And the reason that they put bleach in the flour is to make it whiter. And that's just for women. Now, if you look at this, you see the difference between this off-white and white? This is not bleached. Much better for you. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of salt, always kosher salt, and a little bit of black pepper. And because I don't have fresh parsley, I'm using dried. Now when you use dried herbs, you always want to do it one to three. So with three teaspoons of fresh herb would be one teaspoon of the dried. So I'm just going to eyeball it. You know, my grandmother never measured anything. Sometimes she uses her hands, sometimes she even uses her feet. But whatever works. So we're going to mix this up. And you know some wearing gloves because you don't want to cross contaminate the chicken. There's always that worry about salmonella. So we're not taking that chance. So we're going to take a piece of our chicken like we do, like we have here, and I'm going to toss it into the flour mixture. I always want to make sure you shake it off. Okay. And we're going to lay it out in a baking pan. Do each one of these. Put it inside, shake it off, and lay it out. And do as many as your company dictates. So I'm going to say two pieces per person. It's a very easy meal to make. You could do this prep ahead of time before your company comes. I love how Italians like to call things by how they feel. Like I found out that the word ziti, which is very popular in your pasta, means bridegrooms. Where the connection comes, I don't know. Maybe they served at weddings. Like Italian wedding soup. What is that? That's just minestra with little meatballs. It's all good. Who doesn't love Italian food? If you're lucky enough to have a guy cook for you girls, keep him. You know, at my age, the only time a guy's gonna cook for me is probably Meals on Wheels. But. I don't complain. Okay, now when you buy prosciutto, which is an important part of this dish, you want to buy the prosciutto from Parma. Because there's only like three places in Italy that are allowed to make or to grow pigs that produce the prosciutto ham. By the way, the name prosciutto means ham. 
And the area where it is grown is just as important like the terroir of wine. The air, the type of pigs, the diet the pigs are on, very controlled. And there's a consortium of uh, regulators who put their special stamp on the ham. That way you know it's real. And there are no preservatives. American brands, they probably have preservatives. There's nothing, nothing else except salt. That's the only uh, additive that's added to the ham. And it's probably about drying maybe about two to three months. And then you have this delicious pink aged prosciutto. Let me show you what that looks like. Now I put them in separately in parchment, just for easy handling. See that nice white edge? Very delicious. And each one of the hams come with a tattoo. And it's a crown stamp. That way you know you're not being fooled. It's gonna cost you about $22 a pound. But you know, if you're gonna cook, you might as well use the best ingredients. Labor is labor, right? So you always wanna use the best ingredients. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a piece of our ham, our, our chicken, and we're gonna lay some of the prosciutto on top. Then we're gonna add some provolone. Now provolone comes in three styles, mild, picante, and smoked. Now I'm using the mild, but you can use smoked. And you wanna use something that's easy melting, like provolone. You can use fontina if you'd like. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna saute these, I'm gonna put this on first, and then I'm gonna put the prosciutto on top of that. Now, provolone comes in different shapes. If you go to Salomerias in Italy, you're gonna find them hanging from the ceiling in all different shapes. And there they're resting and maturing. So provolone is made with cow's milk, where pecorino is made with sheep's milk. Remember the words pecora means sheep, pecorino means the lamb. So it's from the lamb's milk, always the best. And again, no preservatives in Italy, they're actually banned. Here's what I'm doing. I put the mild provolone, the prosciutto on top, and for added flavor, I'm going to add three of these sage leaves. Now sage is a perennial plant that you can grow in your garden. They grow profusely. So and it has fantastic medicinal qualities. All herbs do, providing of course they're organic. So I'm gonna add three of these on top. Real nice, pretty, right? and I'm gonna take a toothpick and I'm gonna thread these through because I want these to hold on. I don't want these to fall off when I put them into the pan. So I'm gonna put three, one, two, and three. And I'm just gonna cut this little tail off here and we add that to our pan. Same thing, take a piece of prosciutto like I'm doing. Beautiful, isn't it? Ah, very, very thin. You don't want this to be thick. And a piece of the provolone. Oh, I'm gonna put it, and then fit this on. Don't worry about it hanging over so much, but you wanna fit it on so it doesn't melt in the pan. All right, on top, and then again, the sage. This is probably my signature dish. Very simple to make. Now, originally this was made with veal. Some people have a problem with veal, but I don't get caught up on it. You know, you think they took the chickens out dancing the night before? Listen, it's food. We're supposed to eat everything. So, you wanna eat everything, but you're gonna eat good, and you wanna eat preferably organic. If you can't, well, next time. All right, so I'm pinning three of these onto the meat. And I'm gonna put these aside. I'm going to do one more, and then we're going to go over to the stove. All right, like so. And just throw this away. And one more time, the sage leaves. One, two, and make it look pretty. Turn them green side up. Okay, I'm going to pin these on. Remember, thread it through. Grab a hold of the chicken when you do this. Otherwise, <laughs> what's the point? Okay, so this is what it looks like, chicken salting broca. So we're gonna do these three in our skillet. Now I like to use a black cast iron skillet. 
I'm not into Teflon. I don't know. I don't think anything that's that's coated might not be good for you. So I'm using a black cast iron skillet, or you could use your stainless steel. That's just me. What can I say? So now we're going to go over to the stove. And let's get set up here. Okay. What I'm adding is some ghee. Now ghee is clarified butter where the milk solids have been removed because the milk is what burns in butter. So in order to have a butter taste, you want to use ghee. It's kind of the Indian version of clarified butter. You can make your own clarified butter, but now that this is available, this is the best way to go. So I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons to each pan. I'm using two pans because I don't want the chicken to get steamed. A lot of people add a lot of uh, they fill the whole pan with the item, like meatballs or chicken, and they don't get a fried taste. They get a steam taste, and you don't want that. So you want to kind of spread out your chicken, and I add a little bit of olive oil. Olive oil has a very low smoking point, so you don't want to add much of that, but the ghee will give you that finished flavor that you want. So you let that just get a little heated, and then we're going to add the chicken. Okay. All right. I'm going to add the chicken face down. That's right. Face down. One on each side. One here and one here. Now this part you have to do in the night of your company. Not later because you want it fresh. For about two minutes. And then we're going to turn it over. Keep your heat medium to high. As you see, I flipped over the chicken. I'm only cooking it about three minutes a side because it's going to cook twice. So don't worry about it not being, uh, uh, being undercooked. We don't want pig chicken. So now that I've taken it and I flipped it over, I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to put it back in my baking pan. Remember, we've already pounded this out so it's not as thick as chicken breast uh, would be. So now we're going to add, oh, let me get that little piece of prosciutto out of there. We're going to add some organic chicken broth. So, and of course, masala. Let me tell you about masala. Masala is fortified wine from Sicily, and it is fortified with brandy. And it's going to be a little higher in alcohol, maybe 18%. But that makes it great for cooking and also for sipping. Mm. Voila. And we're going to add about a half a cup to the sauce. Never buy cooking wine, ladies and gentlemen, because cooking wine has salt in it. And who wants salt in their wine? So you always buy the wine that you want to drink. Let that cook. Now, Marsala doesn't have to cook out like other wines. So a lot of people say, oh, you got to cook out the alcohol. Not with Marsala. And Marsala has the flavor of raisins and prunes and quite delicious. It has a caramelized uh, uh, flavor also. Great for Zabaglione. You could use it for tiramisu. But I like it in my chicken, Saltimbocca. So now we're going to add back the chicken. This time we're going to put it in right side up. And we're going to let that cook for, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five minutes. Okay? And then we'll be back. Well, we've taken the chicken salting burger out of the skillet and we removed the toothpicks for presentation. And here you are. Delicious with masala wine and chicken broth, prosciutto, provolone, ah, and of course, organic chicken breast. What could be better? Chicken salting boca. Enjoy it. Ciao, ciao. Well, now we come to the climax of our dinner, and we're making torta caprese, a decadently delicious chocolate flourless cake. Now, for those who are gluten intolerant, this is perfect. 
By the way, it was created by a chef in Capri, hence the name Caprese. His name was Carmine de, de Florio. In 1920, he actually forgot to add flour to his recipe, which came out to be so delicious and so moist that people says, hey, we want this. So torta, which means cake, Caprese means it's from the Isle of Capri, which if you haven't been there, you gotta go. So what we wanna use are the best ingredients, and I use Ghirardelli, because it's real chocolate, and I'm using grass-fed butter and pasture-raised eggs. What we're gonna do is we're going to add the melted chocolate, Ghirardelli chocolate, with a stick of grass-fed butter. We're gonna add that to the bowl. You wanna use good chocolate, people, because, you know, if you're gonna scrimp on the ingredients, why do the work? You always wanna use the best. Okay, so that's our chocolate. It's one cup of chocolate chips to one stick of butter. This is so, so simple, even I could do it which I'm not much of a baker. But, you know, I used to buy food, cook the food, bake the food, and end up throwing it out. And I said, you know, I've got to find a quicker way. So now I just buy the food and I throw it out. Save a lot of time, right? <laughs> not quite. Anyway, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add now the uh, eggs one at a time, adding a half a cup of sugar and a pinch of salt. Again, you wanna use kosher salt. Now, if you're using salted butter, you don't really need the, uh, the salt. And then we're going to add one egg at a time. One egg. And you're going to beat that in. And we're going to add three eggs. One. You don't want to whip this too much because you don't want air into it because then that makes a different type of cake. You want this to be very thick, very rich. All right, and this is three. And of course you gotta add some vanilla. And I usually, vanilla extract, the pure and vanilla. How much? Uh, just a little bit. Remember, we don't measure anything. And for that extra, extra flavor, we're gonna add some espresso powder. This kicks it up, gives it a little bit of a mocha taste. Couple of pinches. Remember, this has no flour in it. Then we're gonna pour it into a baking pan. You can use a springform pan if you like, but if you use a baking pan, you have to line it with parchment paper. And we're also gonna add a half a cup of Dutch brand cocoa powder. You want to use the Dutch because they have the best. All right, Hershey's, yeah, but Dutch. Okay, so you got to mix that in. It's nice and blended. No beating, just blend. Beating adds air and you don't want that. You want this to be nice and rich and thick. And then once we get this all blended, we're gonna put it into a prepared pan, which is lined with parchment or baking paper. Parchment works great. Not wax paper. Wax paper will melt. <laughs> and then you're gonna have some mess. There's some things you could substitute and some things you can't. Now, if you don't have parchment paper, just spray your pan with some cooking spray. The whole idea is you don't want it to stick. So now I'm going to line the pan, which is an eight inch pan, with some cooking paper. And I'm just gonna put this in the bottom, like so. And I'm going to pour in the mixture. Oh, how do you keep from licking the bowl, guys? Eh, where are my kids? Oh, Mom, can I lick the fork? No. <laughs> Your kids will love this, girls. Get them cooking. They'll eat everything. If this were mud, they would eat it because they made it. That's how you get your kids introduced to food and they will eat everything. Okay, my mother used to chase me with the spoon. She'd say, try it, try it. And I'd say, no, I hate the way it looks. She wasn't the best cook. 
but anyway, I'm just pouring it in. We'll let it settle for about five minutes. Let it all get nice and evened out. All right, just kind of tap it so it just spreads out evenly. And then we're gonna pop it in our oven for about 25 minutes. And after it comes out, you'll see the results. Okay, be right back. Hi everyone, we're back and we're making torta caprese, cake from capri. So we've taken it out of the oven and we carefully removed it when you have to take a, maybe a sharp edge blade or maybe a, a spatula and just kind of work it around and then flip it over. And you see this piece of parchment? We're gonna peel this off. All right, that's the finished product. We have to decorate it, right? And you wanna keep it upside down. And I've made a ganache, which is nothing more than chocolate chips with heavy cream. Remember, heavy cream. So we're just gonna spoon this on top. Now this isn't absolutely necessary. Some people just wanna put powdered sugar. Uh, some people wanna put ice cream. You can also put whipped cream. But I like it like this. You just kinda let it ooze over the sides. And you gotta let this set up for about, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Cause you want to, the ganache to create a shell, a hard shell. Mm, what do we do with all this leftover chocolate? I know where it's going. In my mouth. Wow, I'm gonna have a chocolate fix. Okay, that should be enough. And then we're gonna put some beautiful strawberries. But you know, I think we'll put some powdered sugar first. Take some powdered sugar, put it in a strainer, and just shake it. Just tap it. Makes it look so pretty, doesn't it? What are we making again? Torta caprese. Italian chocolate flourless cake. For those who are possibly gluten intolerant. And we take some strawberries. Try to buy organic if you can. Always better for you. All right, we're gonna just put those on top. Make it look very pretty. And maybe a little bit more powdered sugar. Okay, and just a little bit more. Well, there you have it. Torta Caprese. Italian chocolate flourless cake. Yum, yum. Delizioso. Have a piece? Okay, see you in a bit. So now we've completed our three course dinner. I wanna thank you for tuning in to our show. And remember, all my recipes are available on my website, theitaliandiva.com. This is Chef Didi Royale telling you, una vita senza bon cibo, non a vita. A life without good food is not life. So let's toast. This is a Pinot Grigio by one of my favorite vineyards, Coppola. Remember him, right? Godfather, excellent company, excellent movie. So, let me just toast you first. Mm. It's a Pinot Grigio. Now let's try the cake. And we're gonna cut a little sliver. Remember, you don't need much. Just a little sliver. Very rich. And a few strawberries. Yeah, come on. Here we go. Wow, look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Mm. Delicioso. Wow, is that rich? <laughs> it's so good. Well, Didi Royale saying ciao, ciao, and good eating.